Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny, and this is Dark Horse Season 2, Episode 4. And the name of this episode is is um Broadmare Sire. I think I said that right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, um Broadmare Sire. And this was a good episode because in this episode we really get a deep um insight into the DeLuca family. And we see, you know, you know, you know, Broodman, we actually see the breeding of the family. Like you got, you know, Victoria who is pretty much the kingpin. You got Derek, who's her son, Jesus, her nephew, and now her newly released brother, Vinny. And this episode definitely, um, is, it definitely was entertaining. So, um, let me begin. Uh, so we first get a, ep we first, um, get a scene with, um, Derek and Reggie. Reggie makes a surprise visit. You know, something that Derek obviously doesn't like because, and... Um, and he was like, you know, so um, let me shower. And he's like, why would you want to shower, Derek? You're nothing. You're 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 dirty anyway, regardless. And then he starts throwing money at him, saying that um, you know, you were an escort. What what is it? You play with my life. People like you are trash. Why don't you just get get a regular job like other people? Oh, but you rather sell your ass. And like, do you got anything? You got HIV? Because if I got anything, I'm going to fucking kill you. And he literally hems Derek up. But we come to find out it was actually a daydream. And it was true that Reg Reggie did show up unannounced. But they're sitting there talking. But Derek is having this thing like, what if he finds out about my past? How will he react to it? Um. So... So if anything, while they're talking, Reggie is letting him know that I want to know what's beneath the surface because that's what I'm attracted to. I'm like, Reggie, why the hell you got to be so damn difficult? Like the man ain't trying to do that, but Reggie obviously is really into Derek and he's really trying to heal whatever this is that Derek is going through, but only if he knew the long process that Derek has been through and it's a lot I mean we saw in the very first episode of this season where he went through everything he went through like yeah where do you begin with that and but the thing is Derek is still trying to keep it like this you know casual hookup thing where there's no attachments but Reggie keeps on trying to dig more because I think he's really falling for Derek um and he was and he was pretty much saying that you know I think you have this idea of perfection, but the the your concept of, of perfection is just not steeped in reality. Um, and then that damn Derek um, in his confessional was like, you know, the one thing I can't fucking stand is a know it all, especially a know it all who's completely wrong. <laughs> um. And he pretty much saying that, look, you know, I got my own issues. I got a lot that I'm dealing with. I'm not trying to bring anybody into my, my personal business. I'm trying to keep it cool, trying to keep it classy and keep it, and keep it, you know, keep it cute and keep it sexy. I ain't trying to, you know, I'm not trying to go all deep, you know, and having somebody try to save me. And then I was like, nah, I got you. I ain't trying to be a captain, save a hoe. And then Derek was like, he calling me a hoe? How the hell you know my body count? I'm like, Derek, you need to stop. <laughs> Derek is fucking funny in these damn confessionals because he really shows you what he's really thinking. And he be off the he be off the charts with his shit. Um And he pretty much saying that, you know, well, you know what I mean, you know. It's like, in, and this is like Reggie talking, you know, he's like, you know what I mean? It's like our generation. Either we're overly driven by sex, hello, like me, or we just, you know, we just lack the care for people like we should, you know? And I think that's probably where you are. Again, he's kind of off base because Derek was like, you know, I don't accept that because in my situation, I was the one that was always caring. But then again, I always was left with zero. 
And he got a point. Um, if you think about Jabril, if you think about what went down with Rob, if you think about what went down with Neil, yeah, you, he he didn't. He pretty much was, you know, left on his own after all of those situations fell apart. So he did have a point that he really was the carrying one. But then again, you know, he never really got that that same. That same type of nurturing and support in return. I mean, he did with Rob, but then again, we all know that Rob is in love with Brandon. So, therefore, he was kind of number two. Same thing with Jabril. And with Neil, you know, Neil was into um, Derek, but Neil definitely had his own issues. And he was still seeing other escorts while he was with Derek. So, you know, one of them being Sean. So, <laughs> we see right there, you know, Derek was telling the truth. So, of course, um, so of course, um, they they still going back and forth, and Reggie is still, you know, digging or whatever, and he's like, you know, um, you know, so what is it that, you know, you know, uh, we what is it that we just, um, you know, we have these passionate moments, and we bust a nut, and then afterwards you're just on to the next person. And then Derek was like, okay, I wanted some sex, but now you have officially turned me off. And he was like, uh, <laughs> and he was like, well, we don't have to have sex every time I come over here, Derek. And he was like, uh, yes, the fuck you do. I want that slong. And I want you to freshly fuck me like a Parisian street whore. <laughs> I was like, where the fuck you get this shit, Derek? Really? Who the hell says shit like <laughs> that had me dying. I'm like, oh my god, Emery is playing this fucking role, but that shit had me dying. I'm like, really, dude? What is what is you on? So then he was saying that, hey, if you really want to try something different, you know, once you turn around, and Reggie's like, for what? And then all of a sudden, we see Derek with a damn donut, and was like. And I'm like, oh shit! I know exactly what he's implicating. And then he comes out and tells, um, tells um, Reggie, um, you know, can I eat your booty? And he was like, well, no, um, because um, I'm still trying to figure out where this is going between the two of us. And then again, it's 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 um, it's hypersexualized, which is what I'm trying to stay away from. He's like, oh yeah, you would say to you greedy motherfucker. You know, <laughs> like with your selfish ass. Here it is. You got yours, but then you leaving me here with blue balls. So all of a sudden we see um, Derek is like, okay, I got you. So it's like, man, Derek just cannot get a break. He got turned down by Steven, and then, and then now he's getting turned down by Reggie because he's trying to explore this other side to himself. But the two guys he's with are kind of putting up that wall. You know, like, they're talking about his wall, but in a way, they got walls up their damn selves when it comes down to their sexual interactions. So, I thought that was pretty funny. Then, um, we get a scene with Uncle Vinny. Uncle Vinny comes into the bar, and we meet Jesse, who is played by, by who is played by Jesse Dalton. You know, we, we, um, we remember that, um, Jesse Dalton actually played the role of Jesus, but now he's playing the role of Jesse Santiago, who's a bartender, and he is a damn mess, and shout out to Jesse Dalton, he's a very, he's a very great actor, I uh, definitely love him in this role, and it's cool that both, you know, um, the original Jesus and the, and like the, um, the replacement Jesus are all in the same scene, but now, um, Jesse is now playing another role, but he's attached to the DeLuca family, so it's funny. And we see that him and Vinny have this conversation. Um, you know, he pretty much tells him to make him a scotch. But but Vinny is a mean asshole. Like Vinny is Vinny is just as mean as he want to be, and he's really trying to um, lay his mark. But um, but shout out to James Andrew um, Fraser who plays Vinny. He's doing a great job playing this part because Vinny is trying to fuck some shit up. And from this episode. And from all of his interactions, you can tell Vinny's planning something. So Vinny is somebody you cannot sleep on. So we see in this conversation 
that he's having with um with Jesse, you know, he's um asking about, you know, the intel on the business, you know. He also lets him know that his father is Francis Guns and and pretty much that you know, he knew his father and he said, Man, your father was like the biggest hoe ever. He was always fucking somebody's girl and shit. Um and then all of a sudden he was and all of a sudden we see that damn Jesse with his hot ass was talking about stuff. Oh yes. And just like my dad, I can keep secrets too. And then we see that he starts to grab for Vinny. Vinny pinned his ass down to the bar like, what the fuck you doing? He's like, I'm trying to be friendly. He's like, well, I don't want you to be that friendly motherfucker. Get the fuck off of me. And <laughs> then in this conversation, he lets him know that, look. Um, he pretty much lets him know that, look. You know. You know, your job is to pour drinks and open your ears and to bring me any useful information that I can use. Now, if you work with me, I'll look after you. So, stick with me. And, um, we never had this conversation. And go fuck yourself. I'm like, damn! <laughs> like, Vinny gives no fucks. He is ready for power. He is ready for his, for his takeover. And he's literally, you know, planning, you know... He's literally, like, planning himself, you know, to get fillers so he can know what's going on in the business. So he can, you know, so he can um, take over. Because we all know that he was the one that was originally supposed to take over the business. But he was in prison when his dad died. So everything went to Vicky. And Vicky's been running everything. So then, after, you know, Vinny leaves, we see that Jesus comes in. And him and Jesse have an interaction. And this is kind of funny because both of them played the same role. But now they're in a scene together. I thought that was fucking awesome. So yeah, BRTV TV Productions, y'all did that shit. Because that was nice. But they both are good actors, you know. It's great that we got um, that we got back the original Jesus. But I like that the, um, that the um, other Jesus is also in the storyline. But now he's a different character. And... We come to find out that the two of them been messing around. And then like, you know, Jesus and then like Jesse kind of is messing with with Jesus saying that like, come on, you know, with these little odd jobs that she got you doing, you know, like uh picking up gum off the floor and, you know, you know, um checking the cash register. Um and pretty much she's and pretty much she was saying that she sends you on these bullshit errands while she lets all the other guys do all the do all the work. And and it's like and then he was like and she also treats you like a little kid, you know, talking about how the way Vicky treats Jesus. And and he was like, Yeah, it's like um I'm risking my life and she's paying Mike and Sal more money than she's paying me. You know? And then that damn that damn Jesse was like, "Oh yes, your aunt Vicky makes John Gotti look like look like a featherweight. Somebody needs to bend her over and fuck her royally." I'm like, "You bitch!" <laughs> and of course, Jesus like, "Yo, don't talk about my aunt, because at the end of the day, yeah, I may have issues with her, but she was like always, she was like a second mother to me after my mom died." And you know. And, you know, she was like a second mom to me until Derek came along. And he was like, Derek? Who the hell is Derek? He's like, oh, you don't know him. He's like, well... And we can see already that Jesse is a messy bitch. Because he's like, uh-uh. I know everybody that's affiliated with Vicky. I know all of her associates. Did he ever come to the, um... Did he ever come here? He's like, yeah, he came here. He's like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever... Ooh. But I did see her up in here one day with a gorgeous black guy. And he's like, yo, watch that gorgeous shit. I'm like, oh, Je Jesus really is jealous of Derek. Because it's like Derek is now getting that type of, you know, motherly um, protection that he once had. And now that her actual son is now back into her life, you know, Jesus is now somewhat put on the back burner. And he's feeling that shit. So he's like... He was like, yeah, I might actually try to holler at him when he comes in here. And Jesus like, why you got to be so damn thirsty? He's like, what, you jealous? He's like, you know what? You do what you want, but keep it. I keep my name out of this. 
and we never had this conversation, so you better not say shit. And he's like, well, fine, won't you stop whining like a little bitch? And then he's like about to choke his ass like, I'm warning you. He's like, ooh, you turn me on. Ooh, come on, go. come fuck me. Come, come, let's go fuck in the bathroom. I'm like, bitch, really? And that's when Vicky's ass showed up, and she already noticed that the two of them, some name right, she's like, why the hell are you two of here looking crazy and shit? And then, of course, Jesse tries to fake like he was giving, you know, um, like he was giving Jesus, like, some errands or whatever. And, and, and then she was like, you know what? Save the bullshit. Um, uh, Jesus, go into the other room and I'm going to talk to you in a minute. But then she talked to him and she's like, look, I know what the fuck you're doing, Jesse. And you need to stop fucking with me. So if you want to, if you ain't trying to take your last breath, stop trying to fuck my nephew. And he's like, well, how do you know he's not trying to fuck me? It's like, I know you're tight. You're just like your damn father. He put his he put his dick in any hole he can put his they he put his um dick in into any hole that he can get his hands on and shit. Um and and then all of a sudden she was like, you know, you know, use that for these damn customers that you're trying to work, you know, getting that certificate shit. He's like, look, I'm not an escort. She's like, baby. I don't pay you a lot, so obviously you're earning it from other ways. And he's like, whoever I fuck is none of your business. I'm like, oh, you giving salt and pepper teas. Oh, that damn fucking Vicky was like, oh, you're very fearless. But I'm going to let you know something. Yell at my ass again, and I'm going to actually put you around some boys who going to treat you like the real fascista that you are. Now get that fuck out of my face. I'm like... Damn. Yo, Melissa Lazada, I love her. I love her in this role as Vicky. She always delivers and she never disappoints. Because <laughs> she just shut his ass down. And the thing about Jesse, Jesse obviously on drugs or something too. Because he looked like he high out his head. And it's just that he's just over the top with it. And it's hilarious. So, so then we actually see after that. We see that um, Vicky goes to talk to Jesus, and she's like, are you fucking Jesse? And he's like, who I fuck is none of your business, I'm Vicky, I'm a grown-ass man. And she's like, oh, really? So, were you also fucking Mason, or was Mason fucking you? And he's like, he's like, what is going on with you, I'm Vicky? You've been constantly giving me shit. And, he, and then all of a sudden, they was about to get into it, and then Vinny shows up. And she's like, you know what, I'll deal with your ass later. Here's your uncle. So we see Vinny and Jesus... You know, they embrace each other, and he was like, "Oh my God, I haven't seen you ever. I haven't seen you in so long. You know, I left when you were a kid, and now you're a grown ass man." And he was saying, "Well, I vaguely remember you. I was little at the time." Um, but he pretty much says that right now he's in a halfway house. He's working that out, and he's gonna get back into the business. And then he tries to fill him in to what's going on in the business. And he's like, has anybody filled you in? He's like, man, I don't need nobody filling me in. You, you know, I was born into this. And matter of fact, I know this business better than both you and your aunt combined. You know. Um, so then all of a sudden, you know, him, they go back and forth. And then all of a sudden, Vinny starts peeping that, yo, um, I also noticed that there was, you know, something kind of suspicious about you when you know when you were younger and your father was always trying to you know make you man up and shit and you was coming off kind of soft and everything and he pretty much you know confesses to his uncle that he's gay and he's like no shit but um I've been with gay men in jail and the thing about it they actually held their own and they and they definitely um they definitely knew how to handle business when the time called for it. So, I don't want to see none of that sissy shit. You a DeLuca and you're going to represent the DeLuca name. So, of course, this goes, this definitely rubs um, Jesus the wrong way because his uncle's being homophobic and it's like he's kind of getting that same shit that he was getting from his father. And then also, you know, he asked him, so what does your father think? He says, well, he used to have issues with it. He's like, what do you mean used to? What's going on with them? And Jesus was stuck because Jesus and Vicky are the only ones that know what really happened to Victor. And the fact that Vinny doesn't know, if Vinny finds this shit out, he is going to go ape shit. And, and he was saying that, look, 
you know, you're going to have to, you know, step your game up and you're not going to be acting like no little bitch and you're going to be handling your business. And then you're going to tell him, like, go in there and make me go in the damn kitchen and make me some food. Because he was talking about some, you know, ain't, we ain't got no time for no sissy boobs. And he also brought up what happened with Angelo where, you know, Angelo clowned him. You know, and we also saw how Vicky handled that situation in, um, in the first episode. Was it the first? Yeah. I think it was the first episode. Yeah. So then we see Vinny and Victoria have a conversation. They talk about their father... They talk about Victor and, you know, he's also getting the feel of the business. So he's literally working his angle where he's finding out how, how the operation is run because I think Benny is planning to, ha to have a hostile takeover. So he pretty much um, was like, you know, asking about Victor and he was like also mentioning that Jesus is a little sweet and shit. But then he was saying that, you know, the funny thing about Victor disappearing like that he's either in jail or dead and then also we see that damn victoria's like if i knew that my our brother was dead i would clip anyone who would do anything to victor he's like look he was a he, he was a piece of shit but he was still our brother and then he's saying that you know um you know jesus is soft and if anything i want to start questioning him more because he got a little agitated when i was asking him about Vic. And he was like, well, you know they had a long history and shit. And she's like, damn, it's almost past, almost time, you know, for you to be, be um, it's almost time, it's almost past your curfew. You need to take your ass back to the halfway house. And he's like, I want my territory. She's like, I'll give you a territory once you finish your parole. Don't fuck up your freedom. Go back to the halfway house and do what you got to do. So he ends up leaving. So, yeah, so we talked about and then the last scene, um, Vic Victoria's in bed to be awakened by the ghost of Victor. And Victor was like, you need my help because you're about to be up Shakes Creek, you know, because when um, Vinny finds out that you killed me, he's going to slit your fucking throat. And he says, not if I slit his first. And besides, me and Jesus will make sure that that um, that your information that that what happened to you never never it never gets known but i'm like the way you've been treating jesus jesus may flip i mean jesus getting a whole bunch of backlash but then he got two fucking bullets one he knows what happened to victor and um and he also knows the truth about Derek. so either one of those can trigger uncle vinny to do some shit because when Uncle Benny found out he got a little black nephew, we're going to see how he's going to react to that shit. Because we already know how them DeLucas are. And which is why they got she got rid of Derek because, you know, Derek, you know, Derek's, Derek's black. So, so he pretty much lets her know that, look, karma is about to take you for a ride. So buckle up, bitch. And that's where it ended. So I'm like, wow, this DeLuca family is about to really... It's about shit's about to go down with the DeLucas, so I'm pretty much front row seat waiting to see what's gonna happen. So, um, that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. But, uh, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to brtbtv.com. I have the link in the description box. S you know, sign up today so you can get everything, you know, brtbtv productions. Also, um, check out the Triangle Fan Club on Facebook. You get everything BRTB TV Productions. Um, you get um, posts from the fans, the cast and crew, as well as updates from the creative Caesar Williams. Also, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you can get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Dark Horse. So until next time, everybody, take care.